Hey everyone, and welcome to the first review of 2016. Today we're looking at Star Wars Rogue, a shmup roguelike from Arson Games. Star Wars Rogue is a game with a very simple premise. You're a robot contacted by someone trapped in a derelict spaceship, and they need rescue. The problem lies in the many floors of robots standing in the way, along with the various hazards the ship has accumulated over the years of decay. Luckily, the ship has many odds and ends that the players can and will need to make use of in order to navigate the labyrinthine spaceship and complete their mission. The gameplay for Star Wars Rogue is a mashup of concepts from both the shmup genre and modern roguelikes on the market. Movement is handled in the style of a twin-stick shooter like Smash TV, allowing for free-flowing movement along with 360-degree aiming in order to both explore and navigate randomly generated rooms for power-ups and the Gatekeeper boss. The catch, however, lies in the shmup mechanics added into the game, such as a walk mechanic for precise dodges, missiles for bullet removal, and enemies that barf out many colorful bullet patterns in order to overwhelm the players. Power-ups in this game range from new basic attack patterns, alternate sub-weapons, missile functionality, satellites and add-ons for more functionality, and of course raw stat increases to make your guns shoot harder. The game offers six characters to play with along with five difficulty settings, allowing players a wide berth of difficulty ranges to play with. Star Wars Rogue is a game that favors functionality over form, and in many ways I really appreciate that mindset. In many roguelites nowadays, failure often comes from an overflow of enemies and attacks, which in turn makes it feel like defeat is inevitable and I'm absolved of fault. With all the ways Star Wars Rogue lets you dodge and remove bullets, however, there's no real excuse for that. There are many tools and environmental hazards that help you deal with the gross amount of bullets and enemies in a precise manner, allowing players to easily understand what they did wrong this time and knowing what to do in the future to prevent that. The addition of a run and walk button, oddly enough, makes for a much more enjoyable experience. Backtracking doesn't feel like a chore now, since the dash button is so delightfully fast. However, using dash in combat is a bit suicidal, so the walk function is preferred to ease into certain tiny gaps without overshooting it. Being able to swap basic attacks around is also a nice thing to have, allowing each run to have its own spice of variety among all the runs a player might wind up doing. The six characters given also offer a wide variety of playstyles. One character is effectively a jack-of-all-trades, one has a wickedly overpowered basic attack but nothing else, a third character is built for bullet deletion, and one even manipulates time based on player movement. The time fudging robot is probably my favorite, since it effectively turns the game into a turn-based system but still requires you to understand process how to surmount enemy attacks. Star Wars Rogue definitely has a high skill demand, but that in turn makes it more satisfying to play. My big criticism about this game, however, is that it's uncannily like The Binding of Isaac in so many ways. Star Wars Rogue has a lot of tight game design choices, but the game overall feels like it's trying to copy Ed McMillan's hit game. This can be seen in a lot of ways, the overall game progression of seek power-ups and bosses, the randomly generated maps made up of separate rooms, the use of keys and explosives as a means to unlock certain areas, character growth being linked to randomly assigned and passive buffs, game progression expanding as you kill bosses, along with many other small things. Granted, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Many of these things I've listed really helped shape Star Wars Rogue into a more satisfying game to play. Noticing these things, however, makes me really skeptical as a critic since I feel like the use of Isaac's game design feels more like a crutch rather than inspiration. My only other real criticism from the gameplay, however, is that the flamethrower robot is too stupidly overpowered. His basic attack does so much damage over a wide range, and starting out with two regenerating shields outside of the one everybody else gets makes him feel like the easy mode button of this game. While Star Wars Rogue improved on certain roguelite ideas, it also loses a sense of identity and personality with how many core ideas it uses from the other games. The audio-visual design for this game is also an odd thing to look at. As I mentioned before, Star Wars Rogue is a game that favors function over design, and we sort of see this in terms of visuals and especially music. The graphics in this game are not bad by any means, especially compared to many god-awful things on Steam's marketplace. However, from a personal viewpoint, the art assets for this game pretty much feel like they were done from sort of a flowchart design that you would see in a Photoshop tutorial book. The overall design for all the robots don't stand out either, not really showing any traits that complement their attack patterns, but rather looking like an amalgamation of various symmetrical shapes. One big issue I have with the visual design, however, is that out of the six playable characters, only two of them have distinct designs that show where the hurt box is, which is critical for doing precise dodges among all the bullet patterns. Adding to its already overpowered arsenal, the easy mode flamethrower robot I mentioned is one of those two robots that has the defined hurt box that players can see, which makes it even more enticing to play because you can, you know, easily dodge. From an audio standpoint, the music in this game is pretty decent until you realize that there's only a grand total of seven songs in this game. I know this for a fact because I checked the game files to confirm. 
this kind of kills the replay factor of the game since you hear the same song every time. And odds are, if you're like me, then you'll just mute the music for your own brand of butt rock. Another grievance I have with this game is that much like there's no well-defined hurt box to see, there's also no distinct sound that plays when a player gets hurt. This is a vital thing for games in general, and not having it in a shmup style game such as this means various hits will go unnoticed over time which can result in a death that players may be unaware of. I can see why Arson Games chose to focus more of their time on mechanical improvements to their game, but the flaws in Star Wars Rogue show just how important a little extra money in asset design can go. While I sound like I've been overly harsh with Star Wars Rogue, I actually enjoyed the game and how it tried to fuse two genres together along with provide a tight game experience. My criticisms mainly stem from the fact that I could tell the game could be better with a little bit more development time. A lot of the criticisms I mentioned can be addressed with quick hotfixes and some weekend time at the office. And despite the game's obvious influences, I don't mind the game model they chose for it. I'd certainly recommend Star Wars Rogue if you're a fan of roguelites and want a game with a high skill ceiling. It's a little rough to look at, but the game provides a fun ride that never feels outright unfair.